Since the Second Council of Constantinople not only confirmed Chalcedon's formula, but even further clarified its teachings, we might suppose that the debate over the nature of Christ was finally over, but this is not the case. For some, the rendered image of Jesus was still, in a sense, too pixelated. The church needed to press her understanding of Christ to yet one more degree of theological resolution. As we saw, one of the decrees of Second Constantinople was that in Christ, the union of two natures in one divine person is one where the flesh was animated by a fully living, rational human soul. Now, this naturally led to questions. If the second person of the Trinity, the person of the Word of God, was united to a flesh animated by a living and rational human soul, what did that human soul actually bring to the equation? Did it bring something that the divine personality lacked? Or did the divine personality fill in the gaps, so to speak, lacking in the humanity? Now, also, we must realize that these questions still resonated within that widening chasm between Eastern and Western thought. And many in the East remained fearful that Chalcedon's formula divided Jesus Christ into two separate things. Thus, there emerged new and innovative ways to reunite our one Lord, which some incorrectly assumed Chalcedon had divided. For example, although posturing allegiance to Chalcedon's formula of two natures in one person, some began to teach that Jesus Christ only possessed one will. They taught that Jesus Christ, God and man, only acted through one single will alone, that is, the divine will of the Word of God. For them, Jesus did not possess a fully human will, fully human and rational capacity for desire and action, but only a single principle of willing, which was the divine principle alone. Now, this line of thinking first went by the term monoenergism, for one energy, but finally it went by the term monothelitism, from the Greek for one will. To combat the air of monothelitism, the Third Council of Constantinople was called in the year of our Lord 680. At this council, the Church once again confirmed the true teaching that Jesus Christ was fully human, that is, like us in all things but sin. As fully human, Jesus possessed a fully human will like ours. His decisions were fully human like ours. His choices were fully human like ours. But He also, as fully God, possessed a fully divine will like His Heavenly Father. His fully human decisions, fully human choices, were united with His divine will, the will of God. Thus it was here, at Third Constantinople, that the Church, in condemning monothelitism, further articulated to an even greater degree the truth that Jesus Christ is fully God and fully man. All that belongs to God belongs to our Lord Jesus. And also, all that belongs to being human, save sin, including in the possession of a human will, belongs to our Lord Jesus. Again, in His one divine person, Jesus Christ has fully united all that is divine and all that is human. Brothers and sisters, keep studying. This is Father Brad Elliott for the Western Dominican Province.